Good morning. Today we are going to talk about area. So get your guided student notes ready and let's go. Area talks about a region or an amount of surface. Sometimes we use words that describe area carelessly in everyday language. So you can paint an area, you can mow an area, you can carpet some floor, carpet an area of floor, but you can't fill an area. Filling is something that you do to volume. You also can't measure area with a tape measure. Rulers measure length, and this affects the units that we're going to use. Centimeters would not be an appropriate type of unit for area because that talks about a length, and we'll go a little bit more into units here in just a second. When we are discussing area, we use squared units. Common units of area are square inches, so we could write those as inches squared. And we saw in the last lesson, inches squared comes from inches multiplied by inches. Square feet, we would write that as feet squared. Square miles, we would write that as mi for miles, and then the squared next to it, so miles squared. Square centimeters, cm squared, centimeters squared or squared meters, and meters is abbreviated with just a plain M, so that's meters squared. You want to be really careful in your notation that you don't accidentally abbreviate miles with an M, because then somebody else is going to think that you mean meters, and those of course are very different. A square inch is a square, and it's a square whose sides measure one inch each. So when we talk about an area in square inches, we're trying to tell somebody how many of these little squares it takes to cover that particular region. The same idea extends to all of the other units. A square centimeter measures one centimeter on each side. A square foot measures one foot on each side. And of course a square mile measures one mile on each side. So the units for area are squared because that's the way the math works. If we were talking about the area of a rectangle, we might say base times height. So some people just say the area is equal to BH. Um, other people say it a little bit differently. They might say that the area of a rectangle is equal to the length multiplied by the width. And so you might see the formula for the area of a rectangle as A equals LW. Either way, it's the same idea. We're taking the two dimensions associated with a rectangle and multiplying them. Now a square is a special type of rectangle. Right, rectangles are parallelograms that have four 90 degree angles, and a square has that. It just happens that this particular rectangle has all four sides the same length. But the formula is a little bit different. Let's draw a square over here. Right, we have x there, we have x there. If we think about this as a rectangle, we would multiply the base times the height and x times x would give us x squared. So for the area of a square, we need whatever the side length happens to be multiplied by itself. And of course, that means squaring something. So you might see the formula for the area of a square written like this as x squared. But it's exactly the same thing. We're just taking base times height. The last formula that we need is the area of a circle. And the area of a circle is given by pi times the radius squared. So area is equal to pi times the radius squared. Remember before we had the circumference of a circle being pi times the diameter. A diameter is twice a radius, but that's different than radius times the radius. So pi times the diameter is for the circumference, and pi times the radius squared is for the area. And you should probably take some time to actually memorize those. Let's look at a couple of examples. We'd like to find the area of this rectangle. We have a dimension of four centimeters and another of eight centimeters. 
and we know that to find the area of a rectangle, we multiply the base times the height. So we have 8 centimeters multiplied by 4 centimeters. We have that associative property of multiplication that says we can group things a little bit differently. We're going to multiply the 8 times the 4, and then the centimeters times the centimeters. Certainly 8 times 4 is 32, and centimeters times centimeters gives us square centimeters. But what does that really mean? Well, if we take this rectangle and divide it up into all of these little squares, then this piece right here measures one centimeter on each side. And so the area of that square is one square centimeter. So when we look at this rectangle, we see that this rectangle is covered with 32 of these squares. And each of these squares is called a square centimeter. So when we say that the area of the rectangle is 32 square centimeters, what we're saying is that it takes 32 of these little squares here to cover up this region. Okay, um, let's move on to an example from air conditioning and talk about some ducts. Duct, not ducts like quack quack. Uh, anyway, the area of a duct talks about the area of the duct opening or the cross-sectional area. So we want this little orange space here. If you ever hear somebody talk about a rectangular duct, they're talking about a duct that has a rectangular opening. So we would like to find the area of the duct or the area of the duct opening that measures 10 inches by 8 inches. We already know that the area of a rectangle is given by the base times the height. So we know that one dimension is 10 inches, the other dimension is 8 inches, and when we multiply these together, 8 times 10 gives us 80, and of course inches times inches give us square inches. Most people don't write inches in their work like this, they just put the square inches on the answer at the end, but you should know that the square inches are here not because it's what we need, it's because what happens with the math, and of course the math turns out to be what we need. People don't just know that the units are square inches, the square inches come directly from your calculations. All right, let's try another. We have a duct with an area of 720 square inches. The opening is 30 inches wide. We would like to know the height of the opening. Let's draw a picture of this. Let's start by looking at the rectangle. We have 30 inches over here, and we don't know the height. What we do know is that the area of the rectangle is given by base times height. Let's fill in everything that we know. 720, these are inches squared, multiplied by, uh, is equal to the base, which is 30 inches and that 30 inches gets multiplied by the height. All right, so on the right-hand side, we'd like to find h. h is being multiplied by 30. Undo that multiplication with the division. And of course, whatever we do on the right-hand side, we have to do on the left-hand side. And I'm gonna keep the units here in my problem just to show you what's happening with this division. This 720 inches squared is 720 inches multiplied by inches. It's being divided by these 30 inches. Of course, on the right-hand side, we divided by the 30 inches on purpose so that that factor would cancel out or divide out. Let's look at what happens on the left-hand side. Units can cancel just like values. So what we have left, let's see, 720 divided by 30 gives us 24. These units here of inches are what remain. And on the right-hand side, h is what's left over. So the height is 24 inches. And it's 24 inches because, well, we would measure height in inches, but it's the inches that are left over when we get done with the math. So we don't end up with feet or miles or centimeters or something else like that. 
All right, let's try something else. Looking at a new example. The perimeter of a square is 60 feet. We'd like to find the area of a square. Let's see. So this is a square. We know that each side here has exactly the same measure. And perimeter means to add up all of the sides, the distance around the figure. So we know in this case, the perimeter is worth four times the side length. Okay, well, x is the side length. We would like to find it, and once we know it, we can calculate the area. So we'll put in the value for 60 where it belongs. The x is being multiplied by 4, so we'll undo the multiplication with a division. 4s right? on the right-hand side will cancel, and x turns out to be 60 divided by 4, which is 15. And these, of course, are 15 feet. So we have a 15 feet here, we have a 15 feet here, and 15 feet on, of course, all of the other sides. How do I find the area of a square? Well, the area is equal to length times width. So we have 15 for the length times 15 for the width. This area comes out to be 225. 225 what? Not feet. We had 15 feet multiplied by 15 feet, and feet times feet will give us feet squared. So the area of this square is 225 square feet, and this is our answer. Let's try another. Still working with a square, the area of a square is 87 centimeters. How long are the sides? Oh, okay. Well, let's see. We know, of course it's a square, all the sides are the same. If we wanted to find the area, we would have to multiply the length times the width, and that would give us x squared. The area is 87, so 87 belongs over here where the a is, and the side length is unknown. So we have to undo this squaring process, and you remember that a square root undoes the squaring process. And whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other. So we'll take Hold on, there we go. We'll take the square root of 87, and the square root of x squared. Undoing the squaring process, the right-hand side gives us x. The square root of 87, we're going to have to work with our calculator. So let me grab that, and let's see what we have. So square root, we have to use the second key and then we need 87, and enter for equals. Oh, yep, this doesn't come out to be a nice number. It's going to be something irrational. Let's look at its decimal equivalent by pressing the toggle key. And we're going to need to round a little bit. Okay, so let's round to, say, the nearest um, tenth. We look at the tenths place. The two next to it says the tenths place will stay the same. This is about 9.3. So we're going to get rid of this equals and come back and put approximately in there. And this is about 9.3. 9.3 what? Well, let's see. This is a side length. Length is measured in centimeters. Oh gosh, what was the question? Oh yes, how long are the sides of the square? I think we found it. 9.3 centimeters, approximately. Okay, let's move on and talk about circles. So we know about a diameter, right? The greatest possible distance across a circle. It's a chord that goes through the center. We know about a radius, the distance from the center of the circle to a point on the circle. And, of course, we know that a diameter is twice as long as a radius, or the radius is half as long as the diameter. All right, so when we talk about the area of a circle, we're still going to be working with square units, even though circles are round. So there's our circle. Our radius here will be 3 inches. And so we put this on top of a piece of maybe graph paper, and the real question is, how many squares does this circle cover? Now, of course, we're not going to need graph paper in actual practice, and we're not going to count squares. We have a formula for this. We know that the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. So the area of this circle 
will be pi and the radius is 3 inches and radius squared means we have to multiply the radius by itself. All right, let me clean that up just a little bit. There, nice and printed. So inches times inches are going to give us inches squared. As we grab the calculator, clear out what we had before. The pi button is over here, fourth button down on the left hand side, pi times, the radius was three, and the three is being squared, so we'll use our x squared key. Pi times the radius squared. It should look on the calculator the same way it looks on your paper. Ah, well, nine pi, not a big surprise. Three times three is nine, and of course pi is pi. We need, of course, the decimal equivalent for that, so we'll use that toggle key again. And this is about 28.27, let's say we round to the nearest hundredth. Look to the right, we see a four, so the seven will stay the same. Remember that we don't want to use 3.14 for pi. That's just going to put error inside of our calculation and cause our answer to be off. Only round at the very last step. So here we go, the area is about 28.27 square inches, right? Inches times inches will give us square inches. Let's try a couple of examples here. We have a circular diaphragm used in a pneumatic control. This diaphragm has a diameter of five inches. And the first thing we'd like to know is what is the area of the diaphragm? So we have the formula for the area of a diaphragm or area of a circle, which is pi times the radius squared. But I don't have a radius. They gave us a diameter. So the first thing we have to do is find the radius. And of course the radius is half of the diameter. So the radius here will be five divided by two, which is 2.5. We come over here and we say the area is pi times the radius, and that radius is being squared. Use your calculator and see that we come up with about, oops, not equals, but about, 19.63, and what sort of units would we have? Well, these are 2.5 inches multiplied by another 2.5 inches. The area will come in square inches. Let's try another. Oh, sorry, part B of this one. The vapor pressure underneath the diagram is 37 PSIG, and of course this is pounds per square inch as measured on a gauge. How much force can the diaphragm apply to the plunger? Oh, well, force. Um, yes. Well, pounds per square inch. Remember, we talked about that. That means pounds divided by square inches. Pounds are a type of force. So we have an equation that we know just by analyzing the units. Pounds per square inch, of course, gives us PSI. Let's see what we have. The pounds per square inch that's 37, is equal to, well, let's see, the force, we don't know, so let's call that F. The area in square inches, we just calculated that. We said that was about 19.63 square inches. Okay, well, now we have an equation. We know how to solve this. F is being divided by 19.63. Multiplication principle says whatever I do to one side, I can do to the other, right? Multiply the left-hand side by 19.63. Multiply the other side by 19.63. On the right-hand side, the 19.63s will cancel, leaving us with F all by itself. And on the left-hand side, all we have to do is multiply. 19.63 times 37 gives us 726.31. And this is actually an approximation. The force is about that many pounds because we used an approximated value here for this 19.63. All right, last example. The size of a round duct is given by its diameter in inches. We'd like to take a rectangular duct with an area of 192 square inches and replace it with a round duct. We don't want the area to change very much, so let's see what sort of diameter we will need. 
we don't want the ducts to be too small, so whatever we have, we're going to round up to the next whole number. All right, so what do we have? Area of a circle we know is pi times the radius squared. We know that the area is 192 square inches, so we'll put that underneath the A. Pi, well that's just pi, and the radius is something that we don't know. All right, we need to figure out the radius. Once we figure out the radius, we can figure out the diameter. So this radius here is being squared, and we'll unsquare that later with a square root. But the first thing we have to do is get rid of this pi. Pi is being multiplied by the radius squared. So to undo the multiplication, we will divide by it. Pi's on the right-hand side will cancel, and the radius squared is equal to 192 divided by pi. All right, we need to undo this squaring, and of course we will do that with a square root. Take the square root on the right-hand side, take the square root on the left-hand side. You'll notice that I haven't used my calculator yet, and this is to keep the error to a minimum. Let's go ahead and find the calculator. Hold on. There we go. That's better. All right, so on the calculator, we would like the square root, second and square root, of this fraction. The numerator is 192, and then we'll use our fraction key for numerator over denominator. There we go. See the fraction inside the square root? And divided by pi. Enter. So the radius is about 7.818 stuff. I'm going to write this down on the page in just a second, but as soon as I start to write, my calculator is going to disappear. So hang on just a second. If this is the radius, then we know we would need to multiply this by 2 to get the diameter. And rather than round and then type in an answer, let's just use the answer that's already here. So if I wanted this answer to be multiplied by 2, I would say, hey, calculator, keep that same answer, and then just press the times key, multiplied by, you see how it uses that last answer? Multiplied by 2, and it tells us we have about 15.64. Uh, inches. Okay, so let me write that down over here. Square root of r squared is r. The square root of 192 divided by pi came to be about 7.818. Stuff, stuff, stuff. Right, this is approximately, but we kept this value on the calculator. The diameter is twice the radius. So we multiplied that by 2, and the diameter came out to be 15.6 uh, stuff, stuff, stuff. And so this diameter is about 15.6 inches. So what sort of duct do we need to buy? Well, there's no 15.6 inch diameter duct out there. We will round this up to the next whole number, and we will use a 16 inch circular duct. Okay, well that was a lot of examples and sort of a long video. I hope uh, you survived through it, and good luck with your homework. Take care. Goodbye.